I want to read again the poem by Michelangelo. The prayers I will make, then, be sweet indeed, if thou the Spirit give by which I pray. My unassisted heart is barren clay, that of its native self can nothing feed, of good and pious works thou art the seed, that quickens only where thou sayest it may, unless thou showest thine own true way, no man can find it. Father, thou must lead. Do thou then breathe those thoughts into my mind, by which such virtue may be in me be bred, that in thy holy footsteps I may tread. The fetters of my tongue do thou unbind, that I may have the power to sing of thee and sound thy praises everlastingly. Let it begin of God. Everything that you do, let it begin with God or from God or at least with him in mind. But best of all, if it is begun by him. You see, the very, the very salvation of the soul, he begins. He begins everything. He was there at the creation of the universe when he made everything. And today he still makes and he still refreshes and he still gives. And so if you are to say anything, if you are to pray anything, if you are to do anything, let it be of God because when it's of yourself, when you are willful, when your will is not to do his will, then the action is begun not by him, but by the hand of man. And it goes nowhere. There's nothing there, can you understand? And so it must be him. It must be him in you. That Christ himself said, of myself I can do nothing. He said, it, it is the Father within who doth the works. Let it be of God. Therefore, let everything be of God, even your silence. You know, sometimes you don't know what to say. And that is good. That is fine. That is innocent. That is proper to not know. To simply not know and wait. And maybe, and quite possibly, God will breathe into your mind, as Michelangelo said the words. If not, then he wants you to be silent and say nothing. Silence is golden. Sometimes silence speaks volumes. So let even your silence be of God. So you go about your daily activities, but it can begin with God in as much as the very beginning of the day when you arise from bed. You may go sit quietly and meditate for a few minutes. That way you begin the day with a proper attitude. You begin the day rededicating yourself to him and wanting to know the truth and wanting to live each moment properly. Then you go about your daily activities and you have breakfast and you go to work and you're a mom or a dad or a student or a brother or sister or a neighbor and you have recreation and you do all the things that are proper but you always have with you something quietly in the background where you sense that God is your creator and you remember him. You remember him. And somehow that state of mind, that frame of mind, being a bit detached, being in the world but not of the world, having a little bit of mental distance, you're a little closer to him than your actions will be inspired by God or will be in line with principle which are eternal and which he spoke 
and which he likes. You see? And so then your will is only to do his will. Now, there are many, there are other wills. There's another will in the universe and its will is not God's will. And in so many ways, it seeks to distract you from God's will and to substitute its will within you. And the way that comes to pass is when you are emotionalized, when you become emotional, then you begin reacting and responding to the outside. Then you begin to operate on that, on that timetable. See, it's the enemy's will that operates through people. See, it's not the people themselves, so don't hate them. They don't even know. Christ said, Father, forgive them, and they know not what they do. But they have another will. And sometimes you can hear people mouthing platitudes. You hear, you hear them saying something that they heard on the radio or that somebody else said, and you can see that it's totally vacant. They're like parrots. And so much of what people do is just being parrots. But what they're parroting stems from the hand of man, from the will of something else other than God. And so you must simply see that. Don't react to it. Don't respond to it. Don't believe it. Don't disbelieve it. Wait. Watch. And then move in your own time and space as you wordlessly are impelled to do so from within. You don't have to come up with a clever argument whenever somebody presents something that's not true. When they say something that doesn't quite sit right with you, don't even let it register in your mind. Just let it go in one ear and out the other. Dismiss it. And be careful not to be pulled into arguments with people. Because when you do, you become trapped into this. You, you're pulled away from grace, from love, from faith, from patience, from inspiration. And you're pulled into a lower struggle of wills, of energy, of emotion. Do you understand? And, you have, and you've lost the, your ground by which you could have properly resisted. Resist by not re resisting. Resist by not reacting. Resist by remaining calm, by watching. Let the light shine. Let God's light shine upon everything. And then you will see your own thoughts, which ones are not so good. You'll see when you're just, when you're just talking to try to impress people. You'll see when you're when you're, when you're saying something that you don't really know for sure, you'll see when someone wants you to do something and it's not quite proper and so on. You'll see all of that. You'll just see it. And in seeing it, see, there is the separation. There is the separation. Christ said that those who are called, see, God chose and calls people. So you see, the calling is of God. So what you must see is that everything must be of God, from God, and to God. Then you become a perfect vehicle of his will, of God's will. And then that will please him, you see. So when Christ told us to deny ourselves, what he meant was to, to watch for things that support a life apart from God that support the ego. Watch for the little irritations, the little angers, the little involvements, the little selfishnesses, and so on. And when you're selfish, realize that someone made you want something. See, they made you want something. It, it may have done. It may have been a very clever, cleverly done long ago when you were a little child. You looked at something and they grabbed it and they took it away, and by taking it away. It tempted you to want to have it. You see what I mean? Things like that. And it goes way back. You were denied something. You were denied lo love. Or you felt you were being denied love. Or something like that. And it's become a lifelong theme that makes you go out in the world looking for what you thought it denied you. But now you must understand that it's the going out and looking for it out there that's keeping you from the true fulfillment, which is within, which is your Heavenly Father. So seek the Heavenly Father. Learn to be still. Begin each day with meditation. Let everything be of God. Let everything spring from Him. Be 
by him, be to him, that every word that you speak will be thus inspired, and every silence, let your silence be of God also, and life will be sweet and beautiful, and you will experience the kingdom of heaven, and your light shining will bring something of that kingdom of heaven into an otherwise dark world. So you mustn't hate people because they don't have it. Once upon a time when they were little tiny children, they may have suspected that heaven exists and God and Jesus and beautiful things, but they encountered much temptation and they fell to it. And now they live in darkness. So bring your light, but not your light, God's light. Let everything be of him.